Hi everyone. I hope that you're all doing well and staying safe and that your fingers don't hurt too badly from the 10 hours of cello that I'm sure you're all playing every day. I want to talk a little bit about clefs today. Uh, they're really important to us as cellists. We don't always really like them, especially if we're not super fluent, but they actually exist to make our lives easier, believe it or not. As you probably know, there are three clefs that you really need to worry about as a cellist. The first is bass clef. You should be very familiar with this if you are any of my students because we've been working on bass clef since the beginning. Bass clef is what we call an F clef. And all these letters here, C clef, F clef, G clef, just tell us what note the clef is showing us. So for bass clef, we have these two dots here and the line in between them is F. That's why we call it an F clef. For treble clef, it, it's a G clef. We have this G right here. It's circling this line right here. And this line is a G in treble clef. We use treble for the higher and highest notes that we play on a cello. We also have to read tenor clef. Tenor clef looks like this, and this is not a tenor clef, and we'll talk about why in a second. But tenor clef is a C clef, and do you see how it's shaped like a bow? This middle line right here, or wherever this little arrow is pointing to, will be C in a C clef. This is not tenor clef, however. This one right here that we've been looking at is actually an alto clef. Uh, they look very similar. They're the same shape. They're just at a different spot on the staff. So C in alto clef is this middle line right here, whereas in tenor, C is the second highest line right here. The little arrow's pointing to it. So if you're not sure if it's cello music or viola music, if the clef is in the middle of the staff and looks nice, like symmetrical and right in the middle there, it's probably viola music and not cello music. So of these three clefs, we have bass, tenor, and treble. I've written out four notes in all three of these clefs so you can see how they interact with and look on the staff. In bass clef, this note right here, it's a high G, it will be your fourth finger on your A string if you are in fourth position. It has three ledger lines, and so it's actually starting to get to the point where it's kind of hard to read. If you went too many notes higher and stayed up here for very long, it would actually get very cumbersome to try and count the ledger lines that you have to play on. This low note here is your fourth finger on your A string if you're in first position, it's a D. You should all probably know this already. And this is the highest note that you can play in first position. So for bass clef, it works well for most of the lower notes on the cello that you can reach without shifting, which is why we start with bass clef. Here we go to tenor clef. Tenor clef is meant for higher notes than bass clef, but not as high as treble clef. As you can see, this G has three ledger lines here and only one here. That means that we can both go a little higher before it gets difficult to read and also go lower. Tenor clef is really helpful because it is good for melodies that start to get a little higher but still aren't in the stratosphere. And they're really good because oftentimes melodies will play high notes and then go for low notes without, uh, without changing too much. So there will be a couple notes in a high position and then a couple notes on your D string. Tenor clef works well because you don't constantly have to be shifting between two different clefs to make it legible. Treble clef is for the highest things that we play on the instrument. As you can see, this is a G, same as this one, and it has no ledger lines. It's actually in the middle of the staff. Treble clef keeps going for a while before it starts to get difficult to read and there are too many ledger lines, but it doesn't work well for the lower things. So anything below this D here is going to have to have ledger lines lower. We reserve that mostly for thumb position and other things that involve playing really high. As you can see, here's another example of this. This is your second finger. This line is meant to represent half position. Don't worry about it. The, these orange lines here are your first position fingers. So one would go here, two, three, and four. This is your second finger C on your A string. It's gonna be here in tenor, here in treble, and here in bass. That's about all that you really need to know about clefs. They're simple, but take mostly personal time to memorize. So 
that's all I can teach you and you'll need to practice them until you feel pretty good about reading notes in every clef by yourself. Uh, one of the main ways that I recommend practicing, practicing that is to go to musictheory.net and I will show you how to do that in just a second so you can set it up in a way that's convenient. Also, I have written some tenor clef etudes because I love to torture you even if I can't be there in person to do so. I'll link those below. There are two parts. The lower part is meant to be just to make the top part that you guys have to learn sound prettier. And I will also link audio of me playing those lower parts so that you can play along and have it be a little bit more interesting than just wood shedding through some tenor clef. So here I have, um, we're gonna go to musictheory.net. I was playing with that before and I forgot to go back to the homepage. So we have musictheory.net. When you get to the homepage, it will look like this. We're going to go to exercises. We're going to go to note identification. And then here it's gonna give you a grand staff. This is for a piano. See how it's got the treble and bass clef. That's not super important for us. So if you go up here to the settings, there's a clefs option and you can click which clefs you would like to practice reading. You could do all three at the same time if you'd like, but I really recommend just doing one at a time. If you're new to learning new clefs, I would maybe start with tenor. And once I've done that, it's gonna give you the range button. We actually don't use this entire range of tenor. Mostly you need to start with, this is, uh, G right here, and this is G the octave above. I would recommend starting by learning these notes, that's eight, it's really doable. And if you get stuck, you can always remember that C is this line right here. If you're going to practice your treble clef, I would recommend beginning with this D right here, which is that same low D that we talked about on that other slide. It's your fourth finger on your A string in first position. And this is the D the octave, that's a B. This is D the octave above that. So I would recommend starting with those and then expanding the range outward when you feel really comfortable with that. Uh, after that, you can just practice. It'll give you a note. You can click what you think it is. It will give you a score and a percentage up here. If you want, you can reset your score. You also can have it give you a timer so you can improve on getting faster at that and it will give you a progress report as well if you're interested. So this is the main way that I recommend to practice your clefs. Good luck and happy practicing.